Hey, everybody. Professional Picks back with week two. We had an amazing week one where we did really well on the card, had some winners that we posted to our Twitter page, too, and looking to get after it again in week two. As always, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section who you're taking in week two and subscribe to this channel to keep getting this content week in and week out, along with all of the other NFL activity that we've been posting to this channel. Sleewa, well, how are you feeling about this card after week one? I mean, it looks great. Obviously, I was part of the dud laid in the middle there. That was hand up. That was, that was the reason we got the Broncos minus four. So, I mean, granted, everything else stays the same. Woj, absolute maniac on the card this week. You know what? Quite There's crazy. no bigger dud this week than the Giants plus nine and a half. So, we'll take our losers along with our winners. You know, we had – the lock of the week, which throughout the three years of this channel, see what the locks have been so consistent. That's something that I think we take a lot of pride in. And, you know, if you follow us on, on Twitter too, you got the Isaiah Pacheco over nine and a half receiving yards on Thursday night. That was one and a half units. That was our heaviest play of the week. And that one hit easily, you know, without Travis Kelsey, it was clear that the running backs for the Chiefs were going to have to take carry the load in the receiving game. Pacheco hit this receiving yards over early in the game. So you want to follow us at Profit of Picks to get all of our other picks that we've been tweeting out closer to game time too. So sleep a couple losses there, but that's a lot of dollar signs, man. Let's keep this thing rolling. Let's do it. Big week two ahead. Yeah, big week two. I can't, oh, I'm pumped. First game I want to talk about rematch from uh, early game last season, the Eagles hosting the Vikings. Started at seven and a half. Now it's moved to seven since, which is a little surprising to me given the Vikings loss. It concerns me a little bit if I'm thinking I want to take the Eagles spread. But what do you think about this game, Slewa? Um, I mean, I would say both teams kind of looked a little worse than I expected. I mean, obviously the Eagles down like they controlled the game against the Patriots for the entire course of the game. They're up. But I mean, the Pats definitely kept it close. They had chances to come back, win it. Yeah. And then on the other hand, the Vikings just blowing one in the second half to the the Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield, who at this point I don't think is a great quarterback. Obviously, he's still got a chance to turn around, but I was very I was unimpressed with both. Uh, just just from what I expected. I mean, obviously the Eagles coming off the Super Bowl loss. Um, there's there's another one for the counter. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking the same I, thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I snuck it in. <laughs> <laughs> but. I just I wasn't that impressed. I do think the Eagles should dominate this game. I kind of like the over from first glance. At the same time, Eagles could dominate this game and it could just be a low like 31 to 10 type of type of game. You know, what? I just I'm not high on the Vikings, I guess is my initial reaction here. What what do you think it was? Yeah, no, I think you're to your 30 second train of thought was the exact same thought process I had over the span of a long time trying to analyze this game. You know, at, at first thought, I th- I'd said, you know, the Eagles are going to kill the Vikings here, just like they did last year. But then the line started moving a little bit more towards the Vikings. Granted, only a half point, but it still meant something to me because I would have thought the opposite. Then I thought, you know, I really like the over this game. Vikings have a great offense, terrible defense. That's just a formula for overs, just like the Lions were last year. And then I looked at the game between these two teams last year, the Eagles won 27 to or 24 to seven and neither team scored a point in the second half. Really surprised me when I'm looking at that 24 um, seven. So that was odd to me, despite how much talent is on both these teams, especially on offense. What really surprised me in week one with the Vikings was the amount of turnovers they committed. Kirk Cousins was very loose with the football, but th- turning the ball over with interceptions and fumbles. Granted, against a good Bucks defense, but this Eagles defense is certainly better and certainly more prone to forcing turnovers too. So with all of that, I'm thinking that the Eagles too are going to probably dominate. Who knows if the over will hit? And because of all that, I think I'm taking the – Eagles team total over 27. You know, they scored 24 last time. I think they can get to 28 plus. I think they're going to be on the right side of 30 in this game. I could see it being a shootout and the over hitting on 48, but regardless, I think the Eagles are going to get their points. 
And you can see, we, just to add on really quickly, you brought you brought up the Eagles game against the Patriots, how they didn't look maybe as good as you would thought. I thought the same thing in some sense, but I'm giving more credits to the Patriots more than I'm taking away from the Eagles in that game. I'm ex- I expected the Patriots as a home opener to come out and play hard. And they, like you said, had a chance to win that game. That's exactly what they did. And what really surprised me, the Patriots, and that's this is for a different game, is just how decent and formidable that passing attack looked um, against a really good Eagles defense. Regardless of all that, this Vikings defense is going to look like a Pop Warner team compared to what the Patriots threw out against the Eagles in week one. For that reason, I'm loving this over at 27 and a half. Any final remarks? I let you, I like letting you say, say your thoughts on the game and coming in. The pick. I love the pick, honestly. I mean, because, yeah. We go both ways. I'm leaning over, but my one fear is that the Vikings just laying an absolute dud. So you you cover that and just taking the team total here. So I like to pick a lot. Yeah. I would I would lean over with just thinking the Vikings still getting some pass yards behind. I think they're going to dominate, and yeah, not much else other than that. Especially on the ground game. I mean, Yannick and is gone. I mean, they're just getting old. Like. The Eagles should dominate every facet of this game. You know, I agree. It doesn't always work like that, but I agree. That's just what it seems like. And that's yeah. again, and that's what going to roll exactly that way, but no, of course not. But you you do think the Eagles are just about better at every position outside of Justin Jefferson in this game. And yet the line still moved toward the Vikings. It's just odd to me. So I started out with that over 48, but there's always the possibility that Kirk Cousins lays an egg, which he's liable to do at any point. So that's why I like the Eagles team total over. Just a side nugget. Are you at all worried with the, I just, I was most surprising note, I guess, from either of these two games was how Kenneth Gainwell clear RB1 in Philly. Yeah, they were saying that. You have Swift, you have Penny. And those guys barely got any touches. Kenneth Gainwell, all the touches out of the backfield, whether it's running or passing, I was I was surprised by that. Yeah, they were saying that in preseason leading up to this game, and I didn't. It's hard. It was hard to believe just Kenneth Gainwell's been such a committee running back for the Eagles for so long to think after all this time for him to step up and be the clear RB one. I was pretty skeptical, but yeah, it's it's hard to deny the fact now that he is. And you know, I'll give I'll give him a little bit of backlash that I think a lot of people will look good in front of this Eagles offensive line with Jalen Hurts as a running threat, but you know, he's doing well in his position. And, you know, I think between him and Hurts and the other committee backs, then that rushing game is fine too. So whoever's running the ball for the Eagles, as long as you're putting up points in week two, I don't mind. Love it, Watch. <laughs> Moving on to a divisional game, which I normally like to stay away from, but it's been working out so far um, with that, well, as long as the Bills hold on here, it'll be working out. But Niners on the road against the Rams. Both teams surprised me in how good they looked. The Niners, we all knew they were good. They looked unbelievable in week one against the Steelers. Steelers didn't get a first down until like midway in this, almost the end of the second quarter. And the Rams, which I warned in my survivor video, were going to come and compete in Seattle, ended up winning the game outright. Despite being 1-0 and and at home, they're still laying eight points to the Niners. What do you think about this one in what used to be a great playoff matchup? Yeah, uh, the line's fair from what I think. Granted, in a neutral site, you got the the Niners by 11 points. So, mm-hmm. but I mean, yeah, the Rams looked great in week one. I wasn't expecting that. I know we liked them um, um, plus plus five and a half or whatever they were going up against Seattle. So, I mean, they, they just looked great, though, especially without Cup. Because yep. last year, the second they lost Cup, it was just the whole offense fell apart. So I thought um, Tutu Atwell, um, was on just like Puka, Nakua, probably messed that one up. But yeah, I don't know that too. name either. But those yeah. two guys. Regardless, um, I had Kyron Williams on my bench. He had like two <laughs> touchdowns. That was sick. Um, so yeah, I may have to start him this week. But yeah, a lot of no-name guys stepping up. So <laughs> I'm surprised to see this one on the card. For me personally, it's a tough team to read. And then the Niners, who looked like they are ready for the Super Bowl after last week, they they just looked dominant. Mm-hmm. That was one of the, the local games I had. Haven't upgraded a Sunday ticket yet. <laughs> you got to get on that. <laughs> and, uh, no, yeah, that, that game was awful. Uh, it's hard to read because, yeah, I mean, for me personally, just looking at these two, I would 
just take Niners. I mean, you just go with the better team on paper, but the Rams looked a lot better. And I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe they're ready to compete again. No clue where you're going with this. Yeah, I know. I can tell you're fishing for something over there. You, you don't know which way I'm necessarily going. But um, again, I was really out of the out of the two teams uh, here that played in Week One. I was much more impressed with the 49ers, obviously because they just played so well. But even compared to how good I thought they were, they really did exceed my expectations. I'm seeing on Pro Football Focus, the Niners were the number one overall ranked team, just edging out the Cowboys. Which is even more impressive to me is that despite how incredible the Cowboys defense looked last night against the Giants, the Niners still got a better defensive grade than they did. And I think they played a harder, tougher offense than the Steelers and a tougher defense, too, for that matter. So I was really impressed with them. I can't say that enough. Are we buying into the Rams after one week? Again, I said in last week's video, I think the Rams are a lot better than people gave them credit for after last year, after relatively not trying, after a slew of injuries. Those receivers that you named are really stepping up in Cubs absence, but I don't think it's going to be enough this game for the Rams to win. The plus eight is too much for me to take a divisional opponent on the road. I am going to take, or the minus eight is too much for me to take for a divisional opponent on the road. I am going to take the minus eight and tease that down to two. I really would have a hard time with how good the Niners looked seeing them lose by just seeing them lose or not win by a field goal this game. So, you know, if I lose this pick here, this teaser, because the Niners can't beat the Rams on the road and so be it, but I'm going to take the best team in football, the most complete team in football to win by a field goal. So that's where I'm going with this one, Sleeve. Yeah. I mean, to add to that, I mean, the Rams, they were able to generate somewhat of a ground game against the Seahawks. I mean, it still wasn't efficient. And against the Rams, they're not going to be able to run the ball. Like, you put Stafford one-on-one against the defense, it's going to be a nightmare, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, they got comfortable. They got the early lead. I, I do like the pick a lot. That was where I was going to originally lean, um, throw it in the teaser. Can't see. Like, especially after the Steelers, who, like we said, I think are a better team. Yeah, I mean, not not hard to see him do it again. Right. They just looked so dominant. Obviously, you got Debo right up here. That's a absolute animal. Christian McCaffrey with that spin move, long touchdown, made my jaw drop. And then Brandon Ayuk really stepping up this year. And you can even see in the first week his route running is so much more crisp. And it's evident in that one touchdown where he put the defender on his butt and just had a wide open catch. Between those guys, you throw in Kittle, you throw in how good this offensive line is and how good this defense is. It's hard to imagine these guys losing many games, and until they do, they're probably going to be a staple in our cards, either um, with the spread or a teaser, because these guys just think they, they have it all figured out on paper, at least, and in week one. This is one, Sliwa. I'm intrigued to hear what you got to say, because the Titans did not look good in – Week one against the Saints, Tannehill threw three picks. The Chargers didn't look very good, blowing that lead against the Dolphins. Pro Football Focus had the Chargers as the worst-ranked defense in week one. Chargers are laying or getting three and a half points on the road here in Tennessee. I I got a feeling you know where I'm going with this, but I'm going to have you uh, say what you think anyways. Yeah, I mean, unless you throw me a curveball, I know, I know you absolutely love my favorite Frable. <laughs> and I know we both hate Brandon Staley. So I think I'm going to hit this one on the head and you get, yeah, yeah. get the, the hook on the field goal. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but. I mean, oh, you're maybe, right. You're Vrabel, just, Vrabel at home. It's the tougher defense, like you're alluding to there. Um, it's hard to bet against them. And I mean, yes, Tannehill looks horrible, but the throw three picks. Um, not really do a single thing on offense and still be in a, a one-point game. I mean, the defense kept him in it. Everything else was there. Just Tannehill couldn't show up. Um, yeah, I think I think you're going with the plus three and a half, um, taking the hook. You're probably – maybe you're teasing it too. Um, Guys, you, you read me like I, a book, man. That's, that's my guess. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, anytime you give me Mike Vrabel at home as an underdog – I'm I had I I debated this one for a while. I have to I have to bet it because one, this game really this line doesn't make sense to me. I would have thought the Chargers were favored by much more. And I like initially I wanted to bet the Chargers. 
And that was already a red flag. My mind saying this has got to be a trap game. And you know how many trap games I've seen in Tennessee at home? Too many to count. I'm going to got to stop falling for these. And this is me almost fading myself here. But going back to my roots of I'm trusting the better head coach, the better run game, although marginally because Austin Eckler in that Chargers game is pretty good. But Mike Vrabel knows how to play in close games, and that's what this is. I'm not asking the Titans to win, and I'm and they might not. But all they got to do is cover plus three and a half. I'm teasing this to nine and a half. That's the Chargers-Titans combo. I, that's the lock of the week. I really like that one. The Titans always play close. Mike Vrabel is a coach that can win games with a bad quarterback play like Ryan Tannehill has been lately. All Tannehill's got to do is not throw the ball away three times, and I think they're going to compete in this game. That's a big if because he's shown that he's got a penchant for turnovers, but it's something that I'm betting on that they fix and get right in week two after the Chargers had the lowest-ranked defense in all of football, according to Pro Football Focus. On top of all that, you know how many times that we've bet on the Chargers and they've blown it late in the game, too? Like, this is a team that, as they did in week one, really struggles to close out games. So if they're up by 16, 17 late in the game and they let up, uh, you know, some backdoor garbage time points, like, that's uh, that's where we want to be on the right side of this as Titans at home, too. I think – you know, you're inclined to say that the Chargers are going to light up the scoreboard and the Titans who failed to put up a touchdown in week one are going to are going to fail. But I'm not buying into that script. I'm going to keep trusting my Mike Vrabel teams as long as he keeps making me money like he did last week. And we're going to ride with the Titans teasing this to plus nine and a half, along with our Niners at minus two. So you had me right on, Steve. I think. I don't think we've ever won a bet in this channel betting the 49ers. I know we made a lot of money betting on the Titans, so let's keep that rolling. Yeah, no, I mean, like you said, the, the Niners are not the Niners. Keep saying that. The the Chargers, they just find ways to lose games. And that's Staley, and that's why we hate the two. It's, yeah, it's, it's a pick on the coaches. Like, it, really really is. it really is. So this is one that's slowly moving to minus three and a half, but I got it at minus three here. Um, the Bengals, I kind of spoiled the pick right away, Sliwa, but uh, Bengals minus three here against the Ravens. I like it for – I like getting buying teams low. I think buying the Titans at three and a half for this game is buying them low. I think buying the Ravens is – or buying the Bengals at minus three is getting them uh, – buying them low. So you getting Mark Andrews with the Ravens here might be back with that quad injury in week – Week one kept him out. If he's back, that makes this game more interesting. I think this line assumes that he's back. We get the added benefit that if he doesn't play, I can I feel a lot lot more confident about this. Bengals minus three, but Bengals coming home. They were in such terrible conditions in Cleveland. It's not you can't even accurately judge that game and Joe Burrow's performance. He's coming at home for the home opener. I like that a lot too. These two teams are very familiar with each other, and I really I miss betting on the Bengals to have a bounce back game. And honestly, Sliwa, I'm not even betting them to cover. I'm parlaying their money line with a different money line to come. I really think at home here, the Bengals don't start the season 0-2 as they're many people's Super Bowl pick this year. What do you think about this one? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm with you. That, and this is really where we found a lot of our our value last season gambling. And then as we caught up some some steam as it went along was, was buying low. I mean, you pick a team that's, one of the top five teams or one of the top five picks to win the Super Bowl. And you pick them the week coming off of a big loss. All of a sudden you're getting basically even odds. I mean, since they're at home, they're viewing these two teams as even, whereas look a week back, the lines are a little bit different. So I, I like, I like the idea of buying low here. I also think, I mean, obviously you, you mentioned the weather and I know it was early on in the preseason, but I do think, like Joe Burrow just need a little bit of time to come off that calf injury. He's, he has played three seasons, but, um, I mean, going up against Miles Garrett is never easy. Regardless, I, I like the value a lot here. I don't – the Ravens looked good. The defense looked great, and that's where my worry is. But I do think um, this passing defense is a little bit worse than the rush defense with Roquan Smith. Yeah. Um, just the, the stout front seven. I mean, not you still have Marvin or Marlon Humphrey, um, Peters, but I mean, they're getting a little bit older. I just, 
I do think if they are going to be able to take advantage of this defense, it is going to be in the secondary. So I like it a little bit more there out on the out on outside the hashes um, with obviously rope on man in the middle of the field. Yeah. So I like I like the value. It's going to be a close game regardless, but I do I like think so too. Game. And I I do think you buy them coming off of a big loss. This game means a little bit more, especially with Baltimore coming off the win, but. These guys can't go 0 and 2 against two divisional opponents to start the year. I don't believe that a team this good will do that. And that's really what the bet is, too. What did you think about Lamar's new look offense with, with Zay? It, it didn't, I, I liked Zay Flowers, was, he impressed me. I wasn't, uh, I was questioning that pick. He looked real good. Um, I that this you can't really judge that Ravens offense without Mark Andrews, just the way you can't judge the Chiefs offense without Travis Kelsey. They're one and the same, and they are both the focal point that makes those offenses go. And I think they look much different when you have Mark Andrews on the field. So I was surprised they didn't put up more points against the Texans, but I also chalk up a lot of that to Andrews being out. Right. I don't think it's a line mover either, but did J.K. Dobbins season ending injury as well? Yeah, it's tough, but this is a team that I mean, the Ravens have been playing with with and without Dobbins for since they drafted him. Like he's had two season now two season ending injuries in his career. They're used to next man up at running back. He, did, he did score a touchdown for him. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he but, did. And thank God, because I was playing him in fantasy and he would have had three to four <laughs> touchdowns that game if he stayed in. So not rooting for any guy's injury, but I think I would have lost my matchup without that. So here's another really – this game, see, I'm telling you, I thought really long and hard about every single one of these games to put on the card. This was a tough week. Looking at the Packers going into Atlanta, playing the Falcons. We got our overpick right last game for the Packers and Bears, and a, a large part of that, we knew Justin Fields could put up points with his legs, but we bought in to Jordan Love, or at least I did, by picking that over. Um, I – I lo- always have liked what I've seen with him in the preseason and when he has played for the Packers in previous seasons. He showed that, you know, at least against the Bears, which isn't saying much, that he can show up. And the Falcons played a great game against the Panthers. Didn't really look like that when you were watching it. When you compare their pro football focus grade to a lot of teams, they were ranked one, uh, in the top 10, which I thought was surprising. But they played a pretty solid game. Yeah, no. So, um, I mean – so is your pick here the Packers? My pick here is the Packers, but I want you to go first. I you can play devil's advocate. If you, this I'm one totally, I'm totally being biased, pick. but I mean I was also very excited about the Bears heading the season. So great pick heading with the over. Obviously didn't look good for us going into half. There was no like 17 points scored. So a lot of turnovers in the second pushed that one into the green. Mm-hmm. But. I do think the Bears made so many mistakes that made the Packers look a little bit better last week. A lot of avoidable mistakes. Two bad turnovers from Fields, the interception and the fumble, both definitely avoidable turnovers. It's hard for me to root for or feel that confident in the Falcons with such a new-look team, but I do I do actually think the Falcons have a very good football team. Yes, they do. Uh, adding um, Jesse Bates in the secondary – Huge addition. Campbell. Like, they have some some underrated additions that, I mean, I, they're going to add up. And then Bijan didn't do anything too crazy. I think he still has a lot to show and yeah. that this team has a lot of potential going for it. Kyle Pitts didn't look that great. Uh, Drake London, I don't think Drake London, did he get hurt? I don't think he caught a cold pass the whole he game. He didn't do much. And that that's part of my reason to picking the Packers – um, keep going though. I'm looking up the uh, the box score for the Falcons game in the background to see what uh Drake London did. The big the big question mark, and that makes it hard to ever bet on a team is the quarterback position. I didn't see enough from Ritter to make me believe, but at the same time, I thought the defense looked great. The pickups looked nice, and they just have a lot of weapons that that I think have a lot more potential to to play a lot better than they have. Yeah, so it's it's a pick 'em game. So you could you could argue either side on this one, but I think I think I'm a little bit more on the Falcons than than I want to be. I think I think they could run away with that division. It's a very yeah, weak they, division. they look good. It's a very weak division, and you missed a lot of those points. Those small pickups here and there, they might actually add up for them. The yeah, defense, the defense looks much better. Defense look good. They're going against Bryce Young too, though. So. 
Yeah, it helps, it helps when you have one of the best safeties in the league with Jesse Bates going against a rookie quarterback like Bryce Young. He picked him off twice. But I agree with everything you said. And I started on the Falcons in this game, and that's who I wanted to pick. And then – and we'll see if it works out. But I thought about it more. You know, I don't really believe in Desmond Ritter that much. Only threw for – a buck 15 against the Panthers. I guess the Panthers, that'll be enough to win, especially when you win the turnover battle. But against a team like the Packers in a pick em game, you're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more. Obviously, this is a Falcons team that prides himself on, you know, dominating the run game. And it doesn't matter who they're running the ball with, if it's Tyler Algier or B. John Robinson. These guys both average over five yards a carry in week one, with b- both breaking off 20 plus yard runs, too. But that being said, I think they're very one-dimensional and rely too much on the run. If the Packers are able to stop that and they have a pretty solid front seven, um, then I think that tips the scales a little bit more to the Packers. You talked about the receiving core. Drake London, zero catches for zero yards, only a single target. Kyle Pitts, only three targets. So you're talking about these guys that the Falcons are drafting top five in the draft, and they're barely looking their way. The the player that had the most targets and receptions for the Falcons in week one, B. John Robinson. So there's a first round pick they're using to throw the ball to, but it's their running back. So a team that's so one dimensional, it's hard for me to take in a pick and game. Again, I like Jordan Love. He looked good against the Bears. It's the Bears. You know, the, the Falcons have much greater talent on the defensive side, but you add Christian Watson. Um, I think this receiving core on paper isn't necessarily better than what the Falcons have, but they're being utilized in a much better sense. And maybe that's Matt LaFleur than the Falcons receivers are. I think the two-headed monster of Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon is at the very least comparable, if not better, to B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier. So given I think there's better quarterback play on the Green Bay side and a bigger and just more a, a larger threat in the passing game for the Packers, in a pick em game, I think I gotta go with them. It's it's scary for sure, and it it really it's gonna ultimately come down to turnovers. Two young quarterbacks that um, are gonna probably both be tested this game. We'll see who who steps up and who crumbles. But again, this one took me a really a lot of thought. But I'm going with the Packers here, especially as a Bears friend. That one hurts, but I don't think I'm reading too much into the Bears game. I just think I I think these are two. Probably like nine and eight stretch, 10 win football teams. And there's just better quarterback play, at least so far on the Packers side. And a better offensive mind at the head coach. And we've talked about head coach being the difference a lot in the last couple of weeks. And I think that comes to play here again. Yeah. I would say also extremely low total on this one. Yeah. So they do think the defenses are going to show up. But we'll, 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 we'll see. Yeah. And I think this might be the last game we're talking about here. Giants, who got absolutely spanked on Sunday Night Football, head into the Cardinals with Joshua Dobbs at quarterback. I think he threw the ball for like 120 yards against the Commanders. But they kept it close. They really did. And part credit to that Cardinals defense to really keep him in the game. Um, this game is just a stinker, and for some reason I'm putting it on the card. Um but I want to hear what you got to say. We don't need to spend too much time on this one because this is an ugly game. I hope you agree with me because, I mean, I'm just going to throw everything out the window from this last weekend. I'm not even going to talk about it. The Giants are going to fucking blow them out. It's yes. 30, 30. Take all line. Giants minus 20. <laughs> They're stepping up. <laughs> it's not going to happen again. They got embarrassed by the Cowboys. This one's an alt liner. It's not on the card, but I'm taking Giants to win by three touchdowns. Dude, you're the man, Sliwa. This is why we do this. Yeah, dude, they looked awful, completely horrible against the Cowboys. But the Cowboys have the best front seven in football, one of the best defenses in football, too. I don't know if the best front seven. The Niners are pretty close. They definitely have the best defensive line with Marcus Lawrence and Michael Parsons. There's no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, they just ran into a juggernaut of defense in a tough weather game. This team wants to run the ball. Once they got down, they weren't going to be able to run the ball at all, and it just really got out of hand quickly. I don't think that's going to happen in this game. I do think the Cardinals will put in a very similar, if not worse, performance that they had in week one. Dobbs isn't going to throw the ball for more than a buck fifty. He'll be lucky to see 200 passing yards. This Cardinals offense has nothing. They have nothing, and they're not going to be able to – they can limit uh, Saquon Barkley as much as they want, 
Like they're not going to be able to stop them or enough. If the Giants put up even 13 points, 16 points, I think they win this game. But I bet you you see a big game from Daniel Jones at the very least in the run game. I bet you I I would fancy to say he's got 50 yards in him, at least on the ground. You know, the Cowboys defense matched up with this Giants offense so well with how quickly Parsons is able to get through the offense line and get pressure, really throw Daniel Jones in this offense off their game, really get in the backfield and stuff. Saquon Barkley, you're going to see a much different Giants team. Again, let's talk about head coaches. You got Brian Dable, reigning coach of the year. Um, I think it's who's it like Rich Gannon is the coach for the Cardinals. I have to fact check myself here. No, I know it's not Rich, but it's just it's just a weird dude. It's Jonathan, it's Jonathan Gannon. Rich Gannon is a, a different NFL guy. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Gannon's their coach, but <laughs> it could have been it could have been Rich Gannon. He's a former quarterback for the Raiders. Um, whatever. <laughs> Giants are gonna win this game. See, well, I cannot be happier that you just just totally validated my thought here. Giants are gonna kill these guys to be extremely safe. I'm taking the money line. That's the parlay with the Bengals. But yes, I think we're good with that one. So I told you, Steve, the more I looked at it, the more I'm starting to like it. Packers minus one. That was definitely like it's a coin flip game. That's the one I'm most unsure of. But I still like my logic, my reasoning. They're the favorite for a reason, even on the road. I believe in Jordan Love. I really do. Again, Christian Watson back. I think they're going to look good. Eagles team total over 27 and a half. This Vikings defense, no secret, is terrible. They are even worse than they were last year without Patrick Peterson, which really held them together in the secondary. I think the Eagles put up 25 points against a really good Patriots defense. And I know not very little about the Patriots defense, quite honestly, but they're always very good. They're going to put up more than 25 points this game as long as they don't turn the ball over excessively which the Eagles don't really do. Credit to Jalen Hurts in his entire career. Never been that turnover prone. Um, so good for that. But lock of the week, Steve, we've been money throughout the last 27 weeks of football. Our locks have been very solid. Titans plus nine and a half at home. Whew. It's really like the logic is fade myself here. The first thought was Titans are going to blow them out and light up the scoreboard. Or Chargers are going to light them up and blow up the scoreboard. But – Going with the better head coach, going with the run game, going with the better defense with the Titans. Niners minus two, best-looking team in football by far. Let's see if they can keep it going. Even on the road, I looked at last year. Um, Niners beat the Rams both times last year by double digits. One of them uh, Stafford played in. I would have to assume, even with Stafford again, this Niners team looks better than they did last year. Brock Purdy looks very comfortable in this offense, and I liked that. And then the money line parlay, you think the Giants going to win by 21 plus? Alt that one up. I don't hate it, but we're going to be ultra conservative here. Get some wins in the card. Get the Giants their first W of the season, along with getting the Bengals. This is the buy low money line parlay of the week. Two teams that looked horrendous in week one. They're both going to bounce back with wins in week two. That's all I got to say, Slew. Anything you want to add about this card before we sign off? I just- I love the buy low parlay. I mean, I feel like that's where we started making a kill in last year. Yeah. Both these teams coming off of absolute dud performances. I like them both to bounce back. Um, another point didn't get to throw in, but one of the Cardinals touchdowns last week was Sam Howell just fumbling the snap yeah, that leading to a touchdown. Like that's a nine point game, and the commanders looked awful. The Cardinals couldn't move the ball on offense. They won't so, again. They, they, they like won't the all season. Just saying. I mean, get get the Giants in there. I mean, I'm, they didn't look good, but Daniel Jones isn't a first first start quarterback or whatever third start. That's how Al was. I like I like the buy low parlay a lot. I like the total. The one that scared me is the Packers, but for sure, I think I'm just as biased as Chicago Bears fan could be there. So I like I like in the card a lot. Was the thing about the Packers game is that the Falcons have the ability to totally control the game with a run. And that's what scares me. And that's how they win football games. That's why they, they're they above 500 teams. So we'll see. But again, it comes down to quarterback, comes down to head coach, and that's why we're taking the Packers in a coin flip game. One last note. The Jets just took the lead. I saw, dude. I <laughs> want, I'm following I'm following the background. This is wild. All right. Let's sign off and catch the end of this game.
Good luck in week two, everybody. This is a clean, sweet card if I ever saw one, Sliwa. We'll catch you again in week three.